Go north. The Cree people typically don't bite. Find out for yourself. Act two. It's a short one. <laughs> Again, let's look at some of the lessons from the bigger land that is Canada. Here are a few more statements I've come across in the last months. All of them are real in terms of finding them. Again, please feel free to show your agreement or your disagreement. Feel free to show it up as loudly as you can. Another statement. The Cree of James Bay shouldn't directly profit from the natural resources found in their territory. Boo! The Cree of James Bay shouldn't benefit from the resources of their land because they will mismanage the profits. <laughs> Clearly, third party management is the only solution. <laughs> the most sensible route for the people is for the people to have control of the decisions that directly affect them. Yeah! The Indian Act is a 19th century relic and needs to be reimagined for the Cree of the 21st century. Yeah. Profits from natural resources extracted from traditional First Nations lands must be fairly shared with First Nations peoples. Yeah. Do you begin to sense the two sides of the argument, how the argument has been framed? Can you even believe? that the argument still exists. Here's another lesson from the land that is Meshkegwak. My friend William has been trapping Martin all winter. One day in early January, he began to notice that a number of his Martin traps had been destroyed and their contents eaten by some sort of powerful animal. It was strong as a bear, managing to pull traps right off the trees, traps hammered out by four-inch spikes. But clearly it wasn't a bear and a fisher wasn't power powerful enough to do this. Soon, when he identified the tracks, it dawned on William. A wolverine had come into his territory. About that time, stories began to circulate about this wolverine. Another trapper had actually snared the wolverine, but it somehow managed to fight its way out, despite nearly severing its own head, cutting itself to the windpipe. And then a few days later, the conductor on the little bear surprised this wolverine and the animal, not having seen a train before, ran down the tracks trying to escape it. But the train caught up and hit the wolverine so that it flew into the bush. He survived this too, scampering away into the forest. And so the wolverine kept destroying William's traps, devouring the martin. For a month, William tracked it and set conibear traps for it. And for a month, the wolverine tried to heal from its wounds and kept escaping the wily William. But finally, its luck ran out. William and his son Ben finally managed to snare the animal. They found it still alive in a conibear trap one morning. Knowing how ferocious the animal was, they didn't want to get near enough to club it. So Ben shot it in the neck to try and put it out of its misery. Once he did that, Ben approached the wolverine, now lying on its back, and poked it with a stick. The wolverine flew into a rage, managing to grab the stick in his paws and pulling it from Ben's hands. That's when William walked up and finally ended the mighty struggle with one more bullet. That's a true story. You can actually go see the way. I, I, I made William prove it. He actually brought the wolverine up to show me. Uh, and the lesson here, it's an easy one. You got to be tough to live in Meshkegwak. And wolverines are nicknamed demon bears for a reason. To end act two, I want to share with you that when people down south ask me who the Cree are, and I tell them to head up north and find out for themselves, they typically don't listen to me. So I tell these people, if you're not going to go up there and find out for yourself, then go and buy some of my books. <laughs> <laughs> Act 3. Once more, let's look at lessons from the bigger land that is Canada. As always, please feel free to show either your pleasure or displeasure. And I don't mind more things being thrown at me, by the way. Here's a statement. First Nations children are the fastest growing population in Canada. Yeah. It's a fact. Aboriginal education initiatives are absolutely vital for the long-term economic future of our country. That's, that's from the Drummond Report that was just recent, re recently released in Ontario that covers all of the economic uh, situation in Ontario, which is looking bleak, but...
The Drummond Report implores the government to spend more money in only one area, Aboriginal education, because too many First Nation children live on reserves without proper schools. These next two statements are paired together because they seem to be the yin and the yang of so much of the debate going on in Canada right now. They constitute, constitute the two sides of things. One is opinion and the other is fact. Let's see if you can figure out which is which. I'm sick of my hard-earned tax dollars being poured into the bottomless pit that are Canadian reserves. I mean, haven't we given enough handouts already? Ooh. Ooh. That's all I give. I'm glad you get really bad at that. Thank you. <laughs> Another statement. First Nation children on a national level are funded two to three thousand dollars less per student than non-native kids. Yeah. In Ontario, the ratio of funding native children on reserve versus non-native children in the rest of this province is half. Keep that in mind. 